Now I am going to dictate a legal passage at the rate of 120 words per minute based on Supreme Court judgment. Let's start. Trial court without any previous sanction of the state government under section 197C RPC to cognizance in respect of a charge that the appellant had in the purported discharge of his duties used force in excess of what was necessary and thereby committed an offense pair. The High Court in appeal by the appellant, however, took the view that in as much as the state government itself had accorded sanction to prosecute the appellant in exercise of powers under Section 132 of the CRPC, there was no need for sanction under Section 197 of CRPC pair. Allowing the appeal to this court held, the proceedings against the appellant must be quashed as lacking in jurisdiction. The court could not have taken cognizance of the offense for there was no jurisdiction to do so in the absence of the requisite sanction. This order will not operate as an acquittal and merit and the appellant can be proceeded again it afresh whether or not to do so is for the competent authority to decide. There are two safeguards are provided in regard to prosecution of members of the armed forces or of the forces charged with the maintenance of public order sought to be prosecuted for use of excessive force in the discharge or purported discharge of their duty. The first safeguard provided in Section 132 CRPC is that they cannot be prosecuted without obtaining a sanction to prosecute from the appropriate government and the second safeguard is the one provided under Section 197 that no court can take cognizance of an offense against such an official in the absence of the previous sanction of the appropriate government pair. A sanction under Section 132 of the CRPC is no substitute for a sanction under Section 197 of the CRPC. Six significant points of difference need to be highlighted there. The two sanctions are addressed to altogether different persons while sanction under Section 132 is addressed to the intending complainant sanction under Section 197 is addressed to the magistrate presiding over a court para. The two sanctions serve to altogether different purposes while the sanction under Section 132 clothes the intending complainant with authority to institute a complaint and set the machinery of the criminal court in motion. The sanction under Section 197 clause the court with the jurisdiction to take cognizance of the offense without the former, the intending complainant cannot trigger the proceeding. Without the latter, the magistrate cannot have season over the matter or act in the matter. Where the absence of sanction in each case visits different persons with different consequences. Absence of the former disables the intending complainant, whereas absence of the latter disables the court Better. The disability orders into different peers. Want of sanction under Section 132 renders the complaint invalid. Want of sanction under Section 197 vitiates all the proceedings in the court for want of the former. The complainant cannot complain for want of the latter. The court cannot try the case better. The sanctioning authority has to address itself to different questions in regard to sanction under Section 132 CRPC. The question to be answered is whether the intending complainant is a suitable person to be authorized for prosecuting the matter in good faith. In regard to the sanction under Section 197, the question to be answered he was particular court should be empowered to try the case. So also in granting sanction under Section 197, the sanctioning authority has to consider whether or not to exercise the powers under Section 197 within the court to specify the person by whom the manner in which and the offense or offenses for which the concerned public servant should be right and the court before which the trial is to be held. Stop. Thank you.